Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of that of the nonprofit show. You know, we had that jazzy music, and I'm always like in the studio, kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of getting me going. And I'm really excited about this conversation today because we're going to be talking about the 360 degree approach to management with Aaron McPartland. Aaron, welcome. We are really excited to have you join Sherry and I today. Thank you so much for having me. It's going to be a lot of fun. You, Sherry, you introduced Aaron to us, correct? I did. And, and uh, I guess my secret would be that Aaron was actually a client of mine a while ago, like, I don't know, 2017, 18. Mm-hmm. And then I kept her as my friend because <laughs> we just hit it off, and which is the best part of, of consulting, of just meeting yeah. incredible people. And so um, I was excited to, to introduce her to you and bring her on today. Oh my gosh. I love that. I think that's great because you know, that means great minds are thinking alike. And speaking of great minds, we have one of the greatest Sherry Quam Taylor, CEO of Quam Taylor. Um, you know, Sherry is one of our beloved co-hosts and a panel of folks from around the country. We were joking around in the green room before we got started because Sherry and comes comes to find we come to find out um aaron both hail from chicago where they had this massive nascar event in downtown <laughs> chicago and everybody's shaking their head <laughs> so we were we were chatting about that because nothing like a big public event to turn your community upside down <laughs> and i gotta believe there were a lot of nonprofits in downtown chicago you know like there's so much benevolence that comes with big community events like this, but then it's expensive and there are events. And so yeah, that's a topic a lot going on, Julia. Let's just, yeah. it was a lot. This, <laughs> it was a lot. And in Chicago, you know, <laughs> our next week fun. podcast. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it's fun to hear about this because, you know, I'm on the West coast. And so I just, uh, you know, you see it on TV and everything's clean and perfect. And, um, but then to be living in a community with a massive public event, um, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to to kind of get some perspective on that. Another thing that's wonderful and the perspective that these folks bring me every day that comes from our presenting sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, 180 Management Group, Fundraisers Friday, a new show that we're debuting on Fridays, which we'll talk a little bit more about, your part-time controller and nonprofit thought leader. These are the folks that really make each and every episode of the nonprofit show um, really evolve as we have over five years, as we were talking earlier. Okay, Sherry, lead us on. Okay, so uh, if you're an ED listening to this today, you're in for a real treat because uh, Erin is going to talk about her consultancy, Erin McPartland Consulting, Um, but you're going to want to listen closely to her because she has multiple decades in the executive director seat, so she's been in your shoes. Um, So she has seen it all, uh, the growth, the multi-site, I mean, just scaling, uh, COVID, all the things. And so um, her wisdom and I, I think her, her kind of angle that she brings to this leadership discussion we're having today and scaling your nonprofit, um, you're going to love. So I can't wait to, uh, to, to learn from more from her. Erin, could you just take a second and just talk to us about, you know, maybe we'll get into your, the transition and how you've kind of used your, your past role for this new role, but talk to us a little bit about Erin McPart- McPartley Consulting and, and what you're doing these days. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, well, first of all, again, thank you both for having me. Um, so I was, as Sherry alluded to, I was an executive director for a couple decades. Um, I have been through the, you know, we're the solo person in the room for quite some time and built that, um, built things around me. And um, so today I um, am doing Aaron McPartland Consulting. Most of my work is centered in capacity building and leadership development strategic plans, lots of work structure, uh, board development, board and um, board chair, CEO uh, relationships. Uh, It seems to be a big need there, which is really riveting conversation and lots of growth happening there. Um, But I've been doing this now for a little over a year um, full time. And, you know, Sherry, you were one who really, as we worked together before, you kind of encouraged me to, to do some of these things. So I thank you and give you a lot of credit for that. I also want to give you, um, Sherry, credit for the 360. We've talked about this before, but uh, we, so yeah, we worked together, gosh, like 2017, 18. It was a while. 
as well. And uh, we were doing a um, like a big board staff retreat, strategic planning thing. And I was, we had, I still, I think very visually, and I was all of the chairs, like in a, almost a circle, a semi-circle. And I was literally standing in the middle of the circle, kind of, mm-hmm. oh, what, what do you think? What do you think? And I was orchestrating everything. And we took a break or it was later in the day and you said, uh, well, you're like a real 360 leader here. Um, and I, I was like, what, what do you mean by that? And you said, you know, not just physically that you're standing in the middle of the circle, <laughs> but that you have this ability to, to see how this side affects this side and how the board sees that and how the staff sees that. And I remember saying to you, doesn't everyone think that way? And you said, no, they don't. No, no. And I thought, I, I don't know how you do this job. Well, if you don't think that way. Yeah, 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 so yeah. you kind of coined the 360. I've capitalized oh, on it. I'm here in front of you talking you about can it. Have it. Thank you. I'm certainly not the only one, but I want to give credit for it. I, I love, love that. that. Well, you know, Sherry Quam Taylor is the total font of wisdom. Um, I, I mean, I, I've learned that. I learned that from the first moment I met her, but um, I think it's an interesting thing. And, and I really want to get into why use this approach Um, because with leadership we oftentimes think we need that really strong voice in the room to tell everybody what to do and that we don't use I will forever now associate that circle of people that family circle so talk to us about this like because this is going to be a new concept for a lot of people and I find it riveting that you were like well everybody thinks this way well, I guess I assumed, and you know, well, bad assumption on my part, but I, but it also opened my eyes to a lot of different, a, a new approach. When someone coins something or uh, notes something about you, you don't, you don't always realize these things about yourself. So it's nice to have that, you know, external insights um, into your own, you know, um, way of, of leading, working. Um, so I think 360, going back to this idea of standing literally in the middle of, of, of everyone, whether it was board, it was associate board, it was teams, <clears throat> stakeholders. Um, when you're standing in the middle of that, it's not about being the person with every single answer. It's mm-hmm. it's also not about being like, I'm on stage and I'm supposed to know everything. Um, and I'm it's, it's not performative. Um, it's, it's asking, listening, hearing, but also knowing that everything is going to have to flow through you. And that is what the team and everyone is expecting from you, that it will ultimately have to flow through you. But so going back to why 360, 360 leadership is about understanding all of the different aspects and components of your organization. It is not necessarily being an expert in all aspects of your organization. And and you shouldn't be. Um, But you do need to possess that understanding, that concept of all of the different pieces. So we think a lot about, you know, our path to nonprofit leadership. Um, Many of us who are sitting in the ED CEO role, and I'll even, I want board members who may be paying attention to this to, I think this is an important point too. Many of us are coming up through programming. Mm -hmm. We may come through fundraising. Occasionally leaders kind of fly in through you know, philanthropy sector boards, maybe even, you know, corporate wanting, you know, a change of career, you're kind of flying in from that angle. Most of us are growing up through it and we're growing up through it. Our comfort zone is programming, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Or it may be fundraising. Um, It may be marketing and fundraising might be the area that we're most comfortable in. And so we lead through that lens in that zone and then we build the teams around us. But if we are limiting our path or limiting our path and our perspective to just that lane, we're not able to influence and see all the other pieces around it. So this is where it's understanding, if you're a programming person, it's understanding fundraising. It's understanding your perspective, your stakeholder, your board, um, what what other components are happening within your um, within your programming. Big piece of this is understanding your finances. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is this this 360 piece. You can't ignore the finances no. or hope that this finance manager you hired 
is going to be able to do all of that and just give you a few little updates. And I say that as a board, uh, a board thing too. Julie, you look like you have something to, to ask. So I'll, I want to make sure I'm not interrupting you, but no, it's- Yeah, Mary, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, Erin, I, I do wonder, I mean, because obviously it was it was early on you, I think. <laughs> and then, you know, at the end of this, you had a huge team and, yeah. uh, you know, like you, you'd brought on such a, incredible other leaders. Um, do you feel like that lens got clearer every time you staffed up? Because it was like, okay, I can take the- full authority of this task off my plate, even though I still need to be attuned to it, I still need to understand it. Do you feel like that, just the, the evolution of being with an organization for that long really helped you kind of see how all of this fits together? Absolutely helps. It also helps you see what your next hire is, what your next need is, and helping your board understand that too. Um, but I wanna caution leaders also against the assumption that the, the next expert you hire is going to remove all of that from your plate. Um, because if you do, you're bringing in, oh, I need to hire the marketing person, I need the fundraising person, I need to hire the finance person, um, and they're experts. And so therefore, I don't have to worry because they're going to bring it all to me and they're going to tell me all the things. I hope they're experts and that they, you know, you want to hire great people, get out of their way and let them do, do their magic. But if you're not exactly sure what you're looking for in terms of success, what your, what your key risk indicators are, then you're kind of blindly leading and assuming mm -hmm. that everything is going well because they know now you don't have to worry about it anymore. Yep. And, and so that's part of that 360. Again, you don't, you don't want to micromanage so you're still doing the work, but you need to macromanage so you understand all those different components that go into um, you know, what success looks like for your organization that year or that month or that season. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's taking their cue from you, no matter if it's fundraising, if it's admin, if it's finance, if it's programs, they're taking their cue from the leader. Yeah. And all of those pieces are interconnected, certainly, yes. you know, from fundraising right. to finance, even just, you know, I think, Sherry, you talk a lot about um, budgeting as, you know, a skill and an art and a strategy. And I think the budget itself is a big component of this. Yes. So you have to be a 360 leader to even understand how to put your budget together. A lot of times leaders will just say, oh, I'm I'm waiting for the program director to send me their numbers. Oh, I'm waiting for the fundraising team to send me theirs. And then I just glue them together and we have a budget. Yeah, very right. dust. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that, is, um, that drives me nuts. And I think that um, it is shocking how often I hear that. And I hear that even from big organizations, big organizations, yeah. big budgets. And it's, it's really frightening because they never really know where they are almost until the end of the year. And then there's a lot of teeth gnashing and, and uh, it's, it's not a way, it's, it's not a good way to captain a ship. Okay. Let's talk about these concepts because we, we, chatted earlier it's like you got to step back to step forward mm -hmm. got a lot of things that we need to look at talk to us about this yeah and being a 360 is also this ability to be able to really zoom out and zoom in and balancing that you know um i usually say with the first step of, of 360 leadership is it's not just looking around it's looking up get out of your computer, get out of your email, right? Um, and look around, start looking around, start asking questions and, and taking it all in. But you have to look up to start, to start that. So to zoom in and zoom out is really looking at who you are as an organization, what we stand for and how we do it. And that's where the values piece, when you have a 360 lens, you are values driven. You're looking at how all of these um, decisions you're making, um, how they align with the organizational values, they're rooted in um, you know, the, the, what you stand for, and then how they impact your constituents and your community. When I do strategic planning, um, when we, I talk about values, sometimes people think like, oh, we're talking about you know, having integrity and being good people. And like, I, I hope that you're all have integrity and are being- Baseline, good. yeah. <laughs> like, I would just like to, let's just assume all of those things, yeah. but let's get into like what we stand for, like, it's purpose driven, but it's also even more than that. It's like, we do this, but we don't do this. We go this direction. Mm -hmm. We don't go this direction. Mm -hmm. Knowing who you are not is just as important as knowing who you are. 
especially when you're going through these, um, you know, growth, change, crises, COVID. Um, so I find that when we're doing values exercises, you know, it's getting, we, we've talked about why for a decade now. It's like the why is very important, but more than just the why is all of these other pieces around language, clar clarity, values. And when you do that work and you do it, not just in isolation, you do it, you know, collectively, it's yeah. extremely freeing because mm -hmm. everybody wants to be, you know, on the same page and feel good about um, all of the, the not just the direction, but the, oh, we do it this way because of this or, mm -hmm. or somebody, if someone throws out an idea and, you know, we're, we're doing like fetch and everyone's just trying to chase things that just causes a lot of, um, you know, confusion and we're not sure where we're going. So when you add that identity, purpose and clarity, you really have that sense of direction. And Erin, how often should an organization be going back and checking that? I mean, I would assume much of it is timeless, but uh, especially I'm thinking these last few years with COVID and just, you know, trying to stay yeah. the values, but so many opportunities that came people's yeah. way. Well, so certainly through the strategic planning process, like that is a, an absolute given. Um, so every, you know, every few years or whatever your system is and cycle is for that. But I want to see your, your, you know, your purpose, your vision, your values. I want to see that on the front of everything you're doing. I want to see it on front of your website. I want to see it, you know, in, in your board meetings, in your staff meetings. Um, and, you know, I often say that like when your values are really clear, decisions are remarkably easy. Yeah. Because you know to turn right or turn left. You you have a good sense of like, oh, that's not what we do. This is where we're going. Um, and so when you're really leading with those um, and you've got that clarity around it, it should, it's an ongoing thing. It should be everywhere. Right. I was thinking it makes it really easy to say no. Yeah. To say we're not going to we're not going to take this on because somebody else can't do it or we're not going to lag or we're not going to chase funds. Mm -hmm. because there's some great funding available as long as we we do this. And um, I'd love to get your thoughts on that because in some ways it seems counterintuitive to growth. How do you balance those two those two things? The, the desire to grow, but then stay in your lane. Um, in terms of fun, funding or in terms of like, yeah, I mean, I think through your planning process, you, you know, you're determining what your lane is and where you're going and how you want to stay there. And I think that's really important. Um, knowing what to say yes to what to say no to most, most people are very well-intentioned, right? You know, we've got many well-intentioned board members yeah. and, and sometimes they're so well-intentioned that they come at you with all these ideas mm -hmm. and, and that can be as a leader can be very overwhelming. And when, we're going to get to this, but I talk a lot about hourglass and you're kind of feeling really squeezed in the middle of like, well, my board is giving me all these things and, and they're telling me to go in these directions. And I, I, I refer to this a minute ago, but I call this fetch. Yeah. And it feels like, Hey, I just threw this thing over there. You should go call that person. You should go check that out. Or I, I tried that. I, I saw that Mackenzie Scott was doing this wonderful thing. And I saw this. Call her up. <laughs> right. And call her up. Right. A lot of executive directors and CEOs can really be stuck in this middle of like, my board member told me to go this direction. And I feel like I should do that because, you know, she's a board member and she has, you know, she's well-intentioned. That doesn't mean you should. Right. And that is a hard place to be in terms of leadership. But when you have a good sense of your strength as a leadership, as a leader, when you have a good sense of, you know, again, the values, the clarity of your organization and how this type of decision action may impact your you know your entire organization and your team when you have when you fully understand the impact of those it's much easier to make those decisions and to say you know great idea let's park that in you know in our in our proverbial parking lot you know for for the next strategic planning session or the next conversation right. so that kind of leads us to fostering a culture of innovation because yeah. how do you do those two things at the same time as to be laser focused. Yeah. I mean, it's so, yeah, I mean, you, you're getting opportunity coming at you from all, all sides. Yeah. So a culture of innovation is essentially a culture of trust and curiosity. Okay. And this, uh, this is where I like to speak to board members too. So when you're fostering a culture of trust and curiosity among your board, among your staff and among your team, 
you have this, you're striving to improve. You're always striving to do better. You're asking questions, you're testing, you're learning, you're applying those things. Um, you're looking for capacity building, but you're avoiding and watching for capacity limiting. Mm -hmm. So if something is, if you've got all these fetch things, is it capacity building? It, like even my, maybe my own capacity or am I right. capacity limiting? And I think this is something right. for board members to be really cognizant of when they're, you know, giving their well-intentioned recommendations. Um, well -intentioned so good. I feel like that's the phrase of like, uh, are, are, is that person energy giving or energy taking? It's yes. a little bit a cousin yeah. comment to that. And board members don't have the 360 lens. And and really, I mean, we love them all to have it. Some of them do, but they're kind of, you know, they're flying in, they're coming in doing their thing mm -hmm. and then feeling they want to feel like they've added value. So they might be throwing a lot of things out there. Um, and as that, as that 360 leader, it's a lot to take in, but it's a lot to deflect. I like to coach and tell a lot of my CEOs, like, you got to put on your cape. It's made of Teflon. Mm -hmm. And you got to kind of look at what, you know, oh, great. Okay. I'm going to push back on that. Well, it's not really aligned with our values or where we're headed right now. You got to push back on that just a little bit. But this culture of innovation too is, you know, culture of trust, curiosity, being curious enough to ask questions, to learn, but the balance is the speed. So there is a thing is too fast and there yeah. is a thing is too slow. And yeah. the too fast is, you know, are we well informed? Um, are we making just knee jerk? Um, are we living in that land of well intentioned ideas? Um, it also can contribute a lot to change fatigue mm -hmm. within the team. And if they're seeing that happen too frequently, change for the sake of change, right. ID chasing, like where did this come from? I don't understand what this is all about. Too slow is just fatigue. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just change for yeah. We're tired. We're frustrated. We've been talking about this same thing for three years. Yeah. Right. Five years more. Like, why are we doing this? I hear that a lot. Yeah. And I do think there is just that balance of like, we're talking about the same things, but then we're chasing others and we're off track and we're unsure of yeah. where to go. And I hear a lot of CEOs frustrated with that too, because they're just like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Right. Well, it seems to go back to what you said in the very beginning, and that is understanding what your values are, because a lot of this seems to me like you could kind of <clears throat> use the word deflect, but you could say straight out, this really isn't one of our values. And this isn't this isn't where we all decided as a group to go. It's, it's crazy. We don't have a lot of time left, but I really want to get into something that you mentioned, and that's reshaping the hourglass, intentional leadership and mm -hmm. organizational design. Yeah. So when we think about, I, I referred to this a few minutes ago, but the idea of this hourglass, okay? So I look at this middle of the hourglass is where a lot of CEOs are just squeezed. And we're yeah. squeezed because we're like, okay, we've, we're managing up to this board and we've got all these board expectations and we're all these things are coming down to us and we're just trying to, you know, to keep up with them. But we're also then managing our teams. And, you know, it's like the, the structure of organizational design with nonprofits, it, you certainly don't want board members, you know, going straight to staff. You don't want that. But if it's all tightly funneled just through one person, you can't, that's not sustainable either. And so then you have, you, you're trying to, you know, re-explain to the board about something that's going on at the staff level, or you're trying to explain to the staff about something that's going on at the board level. And you're just the mouthpiece and the decision maker for all of these, all these tiny little things that are going on. So I talk a lot about reshaping that glass, widening the hourglass. Dare I go 360 and make it a fake ball? <laughs> I'm not sure if I can go. Make it, Aaron. Go with, go for it. I <laughs> just go for it. But, you know, and I think there, you know, that are in lies, we don't want it to be too, too much so where the board and the staff are ha having too many things and going outside of the executive director. Right. But when we think about this hourglass shape, um, I, you know, I think boards need to be mindful of this as well. I want our CEOs to be thinking about themselves as like the middle of the, the middle of the spoke. Okay. And then outside of that, you've got your board, your stakeholders, your financials, your fundraising, your programs, and all of these pieces that you're managing. And that's the 360 piece. 
if we are just so stuck in this, I can tell you it's exhausting. It's not sustainable. They're just trying to collect all the grains. They don't know what to do with them. They are drowning. And, and we've got to widen that hourglass for our CEOs, for ourselves as CEOs, mm -hmm. uh, as board members for them. We've got to put in some, um, I get some reshaping of our org structure and intentional design. And I think this is where um, we really look at uh, reshaping this to the center. We want our leaders to be able to look up, look around, stand in the middle of that room, right, Sherry? Yep. Stand in the middle of it and be able to understand like, oh, I see your perspective here. How does that, how does that impact this? The key balance there is you're in the middle of it, uh, you know, and all the wheels and cogs are moving, but you can't just keep getting run over in between. In the same way you can't be in the middle of the hourglass getting squeezed, you can't be lying in the middle saying, well, I don't know how this person feels about this. Well, let me go talk to this group. You have to understand it. Know you're the key decision maker, but also know that all of those things are flowing through you as, as the key leader. <sighs> you know, Sherry, it seems to me that if more CEOs and executive directors understood this concept, they would be less likely to be frustrated, exhausted, ready to give up. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are in it, but they don't really know what it is. Yeah. Or oftentimes I feel, I feel like, I mean, every scenario you said today, Erin, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of leaders who are incredible leaders. Yeah. Um, but I think sometimes the, the, well, we're a working board. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like, well, that allows me to put my fingers down, you know, in the, in the bottom part of the hour. You don't class. work here. Yeah. You don't work here. <laughs> uh, I hear that a lot. Or we're shifting from a working board to a governing board. Um, but then they want all of these like staff metrics that are our day to day ops. And so mm -hmm. I do feel like it does take a leader knowing what the roles are at every level and then being OK to push back and say, actually, yes. thanks for that feedback. Um, but I, I've got the information I need to make the decision. And I, I don't I feel like there's a step sometimes that, that skipped in, uh, I don't know, ED school or whatever of like, no, actually, that's not the board's role. This, that's your role. And you get to make that decision today. And so I just like think where's this ED school you speak of? I'd love to hear that. <laughs> so. yeah. Maybe you teach it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. We're, we're in it today, maybe. Yeah. No, it, exactly. Yeah, I love this. Well, this has just been a fascinating, fascinating uh, time with you. And I think that, uh, you know, we work with a lot of consultants um, on the nonprofit show. We don't, I wouldn't say we work with them, but we have them that come on and, um, it's just riveting to talk with somebody who's been in the trenches as a leader. Um, and it, you have brought such a, a richness to the conversation, um, Aaron. It's been really amazing. Aaron McPartland, founder and principal of Aaron McPartland Consulting. Check out her website at Aaron McPartland called consulting.com. And then you can learn more about her work and, and her uh, service lines because they're so interesting. Erin, thank you so much. And and I, I have to say thank you for helping these people that are so critical to our sector. You know, we are blowing out too many um, executive directors and CEOs. Yeah. We're yeah. trashing them and they're just <laughs> waving the white flag and going on to something else. So absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, and I know Sherry, this is the work you do as well. We need to protect these people and this leadership with these robust discussions because if we start le you know losing this critical brain trust it impacts us everywhere the whole world uh, yeah the whole yeah you're right sherry thank you for saying that the whole mm -hmm. world i mean it's really really profound aaron um this has been so much fun thank you we need to get you back on and uh, you know explore some more of these things um again because really amazing so thank you thank, thank you. you for having me we could talk for hours about this <laughs> or i could <laughs> i could too no that's one of the dangers um i could too you know one of the other things that we can talk about all day long and that is our presenting sponsors we have an amazing group that support us here on the nonprofit show they include bloomerang american nonprofit academy staffing boutique nonprofit thought leader your part-time controller Fundraisers Friday and 180 Management Group. Fundraisers Friday is a new show that we're debuting this Friday where we 
take the topic and we drill down something on fundraising each Friday now moving forward. So it's really a great opportunity to learn, to get ideas. Um, we'll have a wide variety of people on talking about fundraising, um, but it's really for our fundraisers out there and anybody who is oriented towards that. I would say, Sherry, it's everybody. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's a fundraiser in my world. <laughs> in my world too. It's like it's it's not just those people over in the cubicle. It's, you know, it's like it's every it's all of us. But you know, we'll we'll be exploring that as well. Love that. Hey, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, as we end every episode of the nonprofit show, we leave with this message, and it is to stay well, so you can do well. Thank you so much. We'll see you.